Well, I do think that there is a difference between the work transfer and also the lot transfer. The work transfer is like if a tree fell on the street, and that's what I call the large transfer. Or there's a light out. But when they need to make a decision that concerns the whole city of Lynn, for example, uh, a couple of months ago, the councilors agreed all 11 of them on the foreclosure if they passed the law that would protect homeowners from losing their home. They agreed all 11 of them. So that was a decision made by every council in the city of Lynn, not just the war council. And I believe that the reason we have the war councils in a large is so you can, like Crow said, develop that relationship with your work council. Go and knock on the door. People come to my door. I'm not a council. Why they knock on my door? Who do you think I should call? Should I call the work council or the large council? And I said, well, I'll do you to get a lot work there. And that's how it goes. <laughs> Thank you. Different, but pretty much the same. I, I do get a lot of calls also because most of them um, I speak the, the language. Um, so that's good in a way because at least they know some people. But I always, before I take any action, I always go to the work counselor first because I don't want to kill the step of the toes because um, as respect, so I need to respect this, uh, them first. So I need to work with them they, they say, okay, welcome. I will be on behalf of them. But first of all, I will be counsel as counsel to uh, one of these. So I will uh, work with them on uh, any issue that come up before, before I take my own action. But we, uh, so I do, I do get a lot of calls to them, like I said. Um, so I, uh, I have to respect the uh, people constantly because they, uh, they know them well, and I want them to, uh, to build a strong relationship. So it's important to work uh, with them for us. Sometimes you know, for the last, last resort, unless, unless they cannot, cannot work with the council, uh, the work council, and then they have to ask. But, I, but sometimes I don't look that way because we are together. We need to be together. If, if, we, uh, if one council cannot do it, we all cannot do it. So we will have to support each other. That's how, that's how we do it. I, I really love what you said how people connect with you even if it's an issue, a war issue, um, you know, whether it's language or um, an affiliation in the group, um, that's great. And um, I, I believe when, when the issues, ideas, and concerns affect the community as a whole, uh, geographically or um, used to a community site, that there are cores in the city that affect, that we all have a part in, say we may not live in, say, four or five, Downtown area or the waterfront or the Turbay or Maryland Woods, but we all have a heart because we tour and visit those areas. And um, if, it affect, if the issues affect uh, not just where you live but where you visit, um, that's also important. And um, one development affects the other. We, we're a stream, we're, we're neighborhoods, but we're all interested. I think uh, when you think council at large, you should think community at large. Um, I also think any time is a good, good time to call that council at large. It's my belief that the responsibility of a good council at large will steer you towards your ward counselor, perhaps will steer you towards a department head or some other resource for the city. Um, if, for instance, you had an idea, as Dan said, some kind of something that would affect the community as a whole, Perhaps you'd like to see a Starbucks come to Lynn. <laughs> Perhaps you would like to see the Starbucks be located in the vacant Blockbuster uh, location on Boston Street. That's a good time to call the accounts are alive. <laughs>
Okay, what are the pressing issues you think the city of Lynn will be facing in the next five years, and how will your election as councillor make a difference concerning the outcome? <laughs> involved in the community, a lot of people have approached me and said, what is your number one issue for the city of Lynn? What is the one thing you would do if you could, if you could make a change here in the city? And um, one of my biggest concerns, just being a resident of the city and active individual in the city and driving through the city, has been a lot of our intersections in the city of Lynn are not equipped with preemption signals. Those are sign signals that allow for when an ambulance or a fire truck or a police car is coming through the intersection, it will give that emergency vehicle the green light. Um, too often, I know, I'm guessing everybody in this room, if you've driven through the city of Lynn, with that large population, the amount of traffic we have, so often we see, you got a green light, we have a fire truck or a police car coming at us <coughs> from the left. Or perhaps you're in Wyoming Square and we have a red light and we have an ambulance behind us, but it can't go anywhere because the light won't change. Um, the preemption signals are this little little black um, uh, sensor that I would like to see installed over the next five years. As Tom said, something over five years as a project will take time. I'd like to see our, our biggest and our um, most dangerous intersections outfitted with these sensors. Thank you. I think the um, most important issue for the next five years will be schools, schools, schools. Um, right now, we. Um, just took over the land on Brookline Street to put a new Marshall Middle School there. If we, we, we have to get this Marshall Middle School done. If we don't get this done, then we need at least four or five more other schools that we need to have built in the city. Uh, they have nowhere to put these kids. The kids are our future. So I think that would be the most important issue for the next five years is getting Marshall Middle School built so we can move on and keep building more schools in the city. Thank you. I, I totally actually, I very much agree with uh, Councilor Bard. Uh, the building of the Marshall Middle School is a critical, critical piece of this puzzle. Uh, if you do not vote on a bond to build Marshall Middle School, we are essentially saying we are not going to build any schools any time in the city of Lynn. Our schools are tremendously aging. We have schools that are over 100 years old. In Marblehead, if a school's over 40 years old, it's you know a rush to Proposition 2 and a half. In Lynn, we have schools that have been around since the turn of the last century. So we really need to focus on Marshall Middle School. If we do not build that school, MSBA, the state agency that controls which schools get built with 80% funding, won't let us build anything else. So it's critical that we get the word out that that is probably the most significant issue facing the city. Other things such as there's a casino supposedly maybe going down to Suffolk Downs were an impacted community because we touched Revere. I think it's very important that we, that we uh, engage those folks uh, that are uh, building those casinos and make sure that mitigation is properly, uh, properly gained for the city of Lynn. We also have an issue with retirement. Baby boomers are retiring, so we have a lot of city employees and teachers that are retiring. We have to be very smart on how we fill those positions and make sure that we're filling them correctly and that some positions that maybe are outdated need to be replaced with new, innovative positions. And we want to make sure that those positions are filled by qualified folks from the city of Lynn, which of course leads to the uh, education, which of course also means we need to heavily invest in North Shore Community College so we have that trade work. I, I agree with both uh, Council Barney and Councilor Cahill. I think the Marshall Middle School project is the biggest in face of the city right now. That's going to be a decision that's going to be made by the voters. So um, we're happy to I mean, talk more after this. Again, talk about Marshall for the the time allotment that I have, but it's a decision that's going to affect everyone across the city. It's going to affect the economic development opportunities here. You can't attract good people, good families to come to the city if we have a school crumbling like Marshall. We need to take care of that right, now, excuse me, right away. Um, other issues, I feel like we made a lot of progress in the downtown, and I think a number of residents that are here tonight from the downtown. Uh, the Arts and Culture District is really beginning to, to take foot attracting new new residents, I mean, new businesses downtown. We have Dimitri's coming in, we have Rossetti's coming in, the auditorium, Cesar Milan's coming tomorrow night, my parents are going to see, learn how to train dogs. <laughs> it's a great thing, we've made a lot of investment, but we can't stop now. Every year we should be investing in our city. Uh, the waterfront, again, we've made countless investments, but we 
have to do more. We have to continue to look to ways to bring in developers. And I, I agree with Councilor Cale. I think as the casino issue starts to develop, we'll see subsequent development along the South Harbor and in the North Harbor site as well. Um, one last thing, we, we need to increase the DPW workforce as well as the ISD workforce, and special services. So the people that are taking care of our streets, making sure they're clean, making sure the potholes are filled, and also the people that are making sure that residents are behaving well. We all have troubled uh, apartment buildings or land in our city that's not being looked over. Those are blights for neighborhoods and we need to have an ISD inspector go down there and really take charge. So there's a lot more we can say, but I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> You know, the sexy answer here is that we're going to focus on education, safety. We're going to do all of the, the things that people are going to invest in the community. We're going to do all these great things. These, um, you know, and, you know, frankly, Marshall Middle School is, in fact, a very important uh, piece of the puzzle, as uh, Councilor Cale pointed out. And, and I'm. But I, but I want to say one thing about that. You know, we all want the same things. I don't think there's anybody in this room that disagrees with the want list. Um, but when we talk about investing in this, investing in that, investing in this, investing in that, we don't talk about how we're going to pay for it. We just talk about saying that we want to do it. And what I get concerned about is when we as politicians uh, speak in these terms, um, because it's what you want to hear. What I want to talk about is what we need to do, and that is to focus on some things that are really uh, rather important in order for us to ever do the things that uh, we're all in favor of doing, and that is uh, improving the, uh, the, the, the system of accounting, improving the system of auditing, improving the management functions within the organization, making sure we are hiring good candidates as Councilor Kelly Mill pointed out, for any of the positions. We need to not just put money at a problem. We need to get good people to do a good job. And if we don't focus on things like that, then we'll um, struggle all the way. Besides getting more businesses to lend, the Marshall School needs to be replaced. My issue with that is that we waited way too long to start doing something. 20 years ago, we started closing schools in Maine because the population wasn't there. We have not reached enough kids for school. Now we overcrowded, and we don't know what to put these kids. The other thing is that once Marshall is built, we have to wait eight years before we can apply for funds again to build another school. Correct me if I'm wrong. We need to wait eight years. So in 16 years, we'll have two new schools in there. Why do we have to wait that long? Well, why not get loans that can subsidize the schools and build them now? It's true. We have a lot of baby boomers retiring, but we need the schools for the new adults coming up right now. The place about building the waterfront, something that, we, that the city of Lynn did and I applaud them for them, is that they took all the wiring from the Linway. That was the first thing that they had before we can get in loans. Now we're looking to get, hopefully, buy the waterfront from the three people who own that. It's a Pat McGrath, a Donald, and National Grid. We're working on it. There is a building coming up on what building 19 used to be, $26 million building. So I can uh, I can agree more with um, my colleagues on um, school. It seems like they are agree everything right now, but it's a fact because we can in a council we see what we need right now. And uh, I'm not just talk much about that because I want to talk about it. And um, other thing is the waterfront uh, project. So my concerns that we might not be able to, uh, to attract uh, investor to uh, invest in our beautiful in our beautiful uh, waterfront. So. I propose that, but I have spoken with um, the leaders at the community development the other day and uh, find ways to, uh, to to help us. Business specialists who help us to promote our city, especially our business, hopefully we can find someone who 
to uh, see that there's, there's a possibility to, uh, to invest in our uh, in the project here. Mm -hmm. And also that we need to downtown because we have such a future downtown and, uh, and we need uh, we need business to come in as well. And also uh, in five years we need many more people in, uh, in our city and we need more police officers to, uh, to, uh, to uh, help us to reduce uh, crimes such as assault, robbery, um, rapes, and, uh, and uh, illegal drugs. So uh, hopefully we, uh, we find a way to, uh, to get some money to uh, hire <coughs> some more police officers uh, at least 20, uh, one, 225 police officers. Uh, well, we're thinking that the most important issues in the next five years, my mind goes immediately to what's in danger. Um, the fading building industry, <coughs> Thanks for holding down your applause, by the way. I heard that little slipping <laughs> <laughs> <Stepping> down. <laughs> Miguel Funes. Please provide your opinion regarding Lynn's economic development progress as directed by current City Hall officials and the City Council. During these past three plus years in office and as a follow-up, what would you do differently? What would be your goals and objectives as Councilor at large for the next plus three plus years that is regarding Lynn's economic development. Thank you, Tom. Well, EDIC, um, uh, James Cocktail, said, let's build downtown and use all those buildings that they have empty and make them into co-ops or apartments. And some people say, well, we don't have the market for it. But he went ahead anyway and he built it. And now one building is empty. They all saw. And 29 people from out of Lynn bought out of 30. And the other person was out of state. So 30 apartments, 30 buildings, 30 new apartment people that move in from other places. What he meant is that if we build the city and we bring new people in, will develop into actually more money for the city. The waterfront is the next project that they have. And like I said before, we don't own the waterfront properties. It's owned by three different entities, three different owners, which we are looking to get into a contract right now who wants, somebody wants to build a building in there. $26 million building is a 20 uh, um, story building. And we need to move forward. The DIC and also with Jamie Match and work together. To develop in our city, I, um, last year I had the opportunity to uh, organized a trip uh, I brought uh, the mayor 
I brought a team in Cabrillo, uh, a team in Maj, uh, uh, and also uh, business leaders from, uh, from, uh, from um, the Little Chambers of Commerce to do the visit low because low and then are very much the same. And uh, they, they have been uh, developed uh, uh, more than us, to be honest. So we, we learn from each other, we, uh, we learn a lot. That the best way to, uh, to uh, develop in the city, they um, have a lot of uh, events. And uh, so I propose also that uh, we should have a, a restaurant month. Maybe I want to start it sometime this year. So that we start to, uh, to um, attract people to come to visit our city more and more so that we can start to uh, uh, advertise uh, so what our city can offer to, to the outsiders. So, um, and we will, pay, we will have to pay for the advertising. So uh, that's it, uh, and uh, I really work on that you know, with my colleagues right here and uh, the rest of my people in council and uh, see if you can uh, find them to do that. Please provide your opinion regarding Lynn's economic development progress as directed by current city hall officials and the city council. During these past three plus years in office and as a follow-up, what would you do differently? What would be your goals and objectives for the next three years? Get rid of uh, the planners for the water supply. Um, I As far as I know, EDIC works as a works in partnership with the city of Lynn. They are governed by their own board. Um, I believe that as a council at large here in Lynn, it would be my role to try to assist EDIC with their plans, with their vision, and try to help them move some of their projects forward. As I mentioned earlier, the Seaport project, in my opinion, never really got completed and was somehow lost in translation over time, either between politicians, between economic ups and downs. Um, I think it's important to give them the resources to try to fire that project up again. Um, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. As I said before, Boston's done an excellent job on the seaport. Uh, I'm a fan of, of mixed use on our waterfront. Uh, condo development, restaurants, small business, etc. cetera. Um, what I would do differently is I would look into highly considering the city of Lynn taking the land at the end of Market Street, the, um, the Beacon Chevrolet land, by eminent domain, and having some vision for what we want to do as a city to move forward with that. Thank you. Uh, there is a city councilor that sits on the EDIC board, so it isn't like there's no communication between the council and the EDIC. We have a lot. Uh, what I think, um, the waterfront, uh, we have to get more aggressive on the waterfront. I don't think but do, I think they're doing it as good as they can, but I think we can do better. One of those things. Um, Jimmy Cardell does a great job, but um, I think they, they got the ferry, ferry where it's
it's almost up and running. Once the ferry gets going, um, things start moving at Suffolk Downs. I think people are ready to make investments, but they want to see something happening. So, you know, I think we need to get more aggressive on the water. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the last couple of years, we've seen some of the most catastrophic economic downturns in our nation's history. And a lot of people have seen that in reductions in their home values. They've seen the reduction in their salaries. And they've seen that in a lot of blight in urban cities. And the city of Lynn has suffered a lot of uh, slings and uh, um, we've had some, we've had some rough times, just like a lot of other cities and towns. But in the midst of that, I want to point out a few things that are that are happening and have continued to happen. We've opened up the restaurant for downtown. We've expanded up the Wyoming Square. We're going to be expanding the parking down there. If you don't, if there's no need for a parking lot, uh, then there's really no business. We need to, we need more parking up in Wyoming Square because there's thriving businesses up there, and I think that's a great thing. There's a North Shore Latino uh, uh, North Shore Latino Business Association, which didn't have businesses coming to the city of Lynn, there'd be no need for a new association. They have a tremendous job. And we're going to ribbon cuttings weekly. Uh, and that's a, test uh, that's a testament to uh, the Latino community that are building uh, new businesses, coming new entrepreneurs. And I think that's a, they've chosen Lynn to come, which is a, a, a welcome because small businesses, of course, employ our local folks. Kettle, Kettle Cuisina is building, and we've attracted them from Chelsea to the city of Lynn. They built uh, an expansion down the Linway, uh, 33 Central. You've heard about that today. But at least the EDAC had the foresight to take that building and try to do something positive with it, aside from tearing it down. Um, we also have a ferry coming, North Shore Community College Test Kitchen. But let's talk about the Beacon Chevrolet site. We're going to clear that title. That's coming up soon. That By clearing that title, it will be buildable. And Lower Washington Street, the Sagamore Hill, have you seen the development there? And working with NDA, we're trying to do a lot of things with housing and I apologize ahead of time for being repetitive. Uh, so the waterfront, we had a waterfront master plan adopted. We had a municipal harbor plan adopted and approved by the Secretary of Environmental Affairs. We've invested over $5 million in collaboration with the state to remove the power lines. We've invested over $100,000 on Seaport Marina. Half of that project is done. The, the docks were falling into the ocean, and now we have an active marina with a wave attenuator, which will prevent further uh, disrepair at the facility. Change all the local zoning that happened prior to my time on the council, so I can't take credit for good work. Um, we've, uh, sorry, Paul, we've uh, established an expedited permitting both at the local level and at the state level. We're telling businesses, we want you to come here, we don't want you to have to wait to develop. We want shovels in the ground. And this, this all, this, a lot of stuff happened recently, so we're talking about all happened overnight. Uh, the water ferry, Senator McGee and EDIC have worked very hard on this. This is almost done. Next year, we could have a water ferry in Lynn, 30 minutes to Boston. Marblehead, Mahan, Swamps, Gittin, Lane, the whole region will benefit. We'll see transit-oriented development. In the downtown, we've had new groups pop up all over the place. Arts After Hours has done a great job. Downtown Lynn Neighborhood Association. There's always events happening down there. Come down there and see it. We've made significant investments through our public art. The, the commuter road bridge is no longer Pepto-Bismol pink. We have a nice uh, <laughs> auditorium that now can function year-long. Um, also, outside of the downtown of the waterfront, I think Dan touched upon this, we're making a significant infrastructure investment up in Broadway, all the way to Wyoming Square. And with the $4 million investment that the council passed, the mayor approved last year, we're going to be improving parks and playgrounds across the city, including Fraser Field, the Lynn Commons, the Lynn Woods, McManus Field, the Arena and Auditorium. Thank you. <coughs> In terms of uh, economic development in the city of Lynn, uh, I'm a firm believer in uh, the private sector um, playing a lead role in the development of um, property, uh, and, that, and I make no exception with respect to the downtown, to the uh, waterfront, and to the two um, large possible in West Lynn that are, where the uh, market basket is going to go. Um, the reason that those properties are being developed or will be developed is because government helped guide the way so the private sector can come in and do their job, which is to um, create wealth, to create jobs, and to build a uh, community that people will want to come to. Uh, and I think that's really an important thing to understand. Um, government, um, all too often, thinks it has all the answers. Uh, you know, I sat in, on the councils uh, for six years, and uh, sometimes I try to believe that I have all the answers. I don't. The private sector has a lot of the answers, all the answers. We need to be guiding them along, uh, and it's 
never more prominent than in downtown. If you look and see what's going on in the downtown, I don't know how many folks uh, get to appreciate downtown during the day. There is a hustling, bustling, uh, thriving economy down there right now. People working, people going to lunch, people going out for walks, um, all positive stuff. And I'm very excited about what's going on in the downtown, and it's all because of the private sector. And on to the next question. We'll start with Paul Crowley. Uh, well, I, I can't vouch for the facts that are mentioned in these questions because I didn't submit them. I can only vouch for the questions themselves, but concerning safety, the mayor stated that the increased police force has helped decrease crime by 4%. How much does it cost the city to reduce crime by 4%? Do you think citizens feel 4% safer? If there is an error in this calculation, could there be other contributing factors in reducing crime, such as the building of a community? I'm going to wing it, I think, on this one. <laughs> You know, basically, public safety in any community, more importantly in the city of Lynn, is very important to each and every one of us in this room and each and every person who lives in the city. There are areas in this city where crime is, uh, you know, a more of a problem than others. Um, there is, uh, you know, a continuing um, problem in that we have certainly a large police force people wonder if what is enough to make it work. What I will tell you is that the, uh, the focus on uh, enforcement, as I like to put it, chasing the bad guys, is while it's important and something that has to be done to keep us safe, a, a greater emphasis needs to be put on developing the community, getting to know the people in the community, thinking of it in terms of prevention. Uh, you know, uh, where I work at Gliss, um, and it, our scorekeeper here, uh, timekeeper here, knows all too well what we go through in our protective services. Um, what we end up doing is going after, um, we, we discover problems after they occur. What we need to be doing is focusing on how to prevent them from occurring in the first place. And that applies to these public safety and as well as health and education. I have a, a list of uh, statistics here for 2012. And it says here that we had about 44 incidents in the My idea and how I propose to reduce crime actually is by doing a buyback scan in the city of Lincoln. Why don't we do that? All the cities have come. We have the statistics. We do all the New York City, mm -hmm. no. Why can't we take some of the guns off the streets? Chief uh, Carpenter said that, gave me some opinion of why it's good and why it's not. But as long as we keep those guns on the streets, any of us, going home tonight, we are a target. We don't know what may happen. So I propose that we create a plan to buy back those products. If you are with me, I hope you can vote for me, because that's my plan. And that's what I'd like to propose the moment I'm elected.
quite accurate uh, ones yet. The love is the ends still still happen almost any day. And um, so that's why I believe that we have to find money to uh, to hire more police officers because we cannot depend on what we have right now because they work overtime too much, they, they get tired, so they, they might not uh, be able to uh, In general, over the past five years, I, I actually feel a lot better about walking around the city. Um, recently with the community liaison team that I personally have seen around the community, especially in the downtown area, downtown Lynn area, Lynn Common, I've actually seen them in Ward 1 as well. I, in general, feel better about our community. So I don't have um, enough information on the stats and the percentages and numbers, but I do think that our, our Lynn police have done a good job recently. There has been some major raids. They have taken drugs and guns and gangsters off our streets. Um, I also think that it's not just, just on the police. I think we need to have general improvements made by our city drugs, throughout, by our city departments throughout the city. Uh, you got the broken window theory. I also think, as I mentioned before, preemption signals is another factor of safety um, in, our, in our city. Heroin is a big problem in our city as well. And in talking with the chief of police, I think that that's where a lot of our crime stems from. Um, my personal opinion about the best way to deal with that is education in our schools, education in our community centers, etc. cetera. Um, and then also from working with LIFESOA, who deals with troubled youth, it's, it's very important to make sure we ensure that our kids are off the streets in the summertime and that, that we are making sure we have the money to give them summer jobs. Thank you. You know, strength is in numbers. Um, you can uh, show me all the statistics you want. Uh, it's, you know, it's Chinese to me. You know, you got to have people um, there. Um, like when I got on the council, one of the things I wanted to do was to bring up, bring on CLTs. Well, we have CLTs, the community police, it now, which is great. We need. Um, police officers in the high schools. We don't have any in the high schools. They're in the junior high schools now. I mean, it, it, <coughs> I know it costs money. Uh, they go after grants to hire more police officers. But when these grants run out, you know, somebody's got to find a way to pay these police officers. So the, the bottom line is uh, we need more police officers. Um, once people feel safe in the city, I'm sure outsiders are going to invest in the city. But you have to feel safe first. And, and strength is in numbers, and we just don't have the numbers, you know, to do that. Thank you.
Uh, there's a famous book called Freakonomics. I don't know if anyone's ever read it, but it's a bizarre book where they take strange statistics and kind of string them together. Like if uh, human consumption of bananas goes up, then uh, we have an increase of hurricanes in the sea. I don't really believe in that stuff. Uh, I think, Luke, uh, in my understanding, the question is have we spent, have the money spent on the increase of police resulted in a reduction of crime? Um, I think I can get a look at the whole scope of things. We've also had a reduction, although slight, although it's going in the right direction, of unemployment in the city, which at a record high of 12 or 14 percent uh, and finally come down, uh, even though they're not where we want them to be, it's still re they're still going down. And I guess the bad news for you, the assessor claims that uh, assessments seem to be going up. So although it's a bad sign for taxpayers, um, it's actually a good sign for growth. That means the values of the properties are going up, which means the economy is getting a little bit more healthy. So when you have those things, and you have investments in education, you have like things like a drop-in center in Lynn Tech, and some of the jobs for, for uh, young children to get on the streets, all those things are really tied into it. So we're talking about really reduction in crime. It's a longer and much more in-depth conversation about economic development, about education, and of course about investing in public safety. And I, I think everyone likes the, the bike cops, uh, the CLTs, and I think everybody makes you feel a little safe. Because no one police are better. So I think we've done a good job. There's, there's a lot more we can do, and hopefully, um, with, uh, with more resources, we'll do. I think we could always use more police on the ground. Um, so we need another 30 or so police officers out there to be an acceptable level. Uh, obviously, it's tough in, in, in tough economic times like this to make that increase. But um, I think we should always be aiming towards that level. I think the CLT program has done a great job. We actually have police officers on the ground communicating one on one with the neighbors. So having that, that connection, I mean, obviously you can go to your board council or your large councils, but having that connection on the ground, uh, I think has really improved people's feeling of uh, safety in their neighborhoods. I do agree the student safety officers, as a product of Lynn Public Schools, it was always helpful to have someone there, really working in, in kind of the same way as a CLT officer. You have someone you can talk to. Um, additionally, I, I agree youth, youth summer jobs, after school programs, really stopping the problem before it starts and giving kids things to do uh, during their out-of-school time. But again, coming back to the money. I, I do want to want to recognize, that, as, as Clay, Clay did, that the heroin problem in the city. It, it's, it's not something simple that we can say we're going to do this and it's gone, but it's something that I, I know Chief Carpenter and the force is working on. I think we've identified that as a problem. It, it, it leads to other crimes. And, um, I, I don't have all the answers on that, but I, I think if we can continue to work hard on it and really put a focus, we'll make some around. Thank you. Okay, um, it's time to wrap up now. I have one question here I wanted to ask, but I think that this question applies to what, what you should say in your closing statements. Not that I'm telling you what to say in your closing <laughs> statements, but this particular question says, what makes you the best candidate for counselor, and how do you stand out from other counselors running for office? So keep that in mind when you make your closing statements and you have 1.5, one and a half minutes, start, starting with Buzzy. Um, it worked out to my advantage by you going the wrong way. Now I don't have to follow Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said earlier, I, I'm Buzzy Barton. I'm 61 years old. I've been in this city all my life. Um, I'm no better than anybody here. You know, I'm just an average guy. Um, everybody has their strong points. Everybody has their weak points. As you can see, the base ain't for me. You know, but um, all kidding aside, um, I love what I'm doing. I, I think I'm doing a good job. Um, I'm retired. I'm there 24-7. I can be reached. I, I, you know, I don't have a job. I have nothing but time. So I give my heart to the city. I always have. And, I, and I'll continue to do that. Thank you. I think our goal as uh, residents, when we talk about four city council at large positions, is to make sure that you have four of the best city council at large you can possibly vote for. I'd like to be one of those best city councilors in the city. Of and I don't have to be the best city council in the world, I just have to be your best city council. And I hope that I've, I've shown that the hard work that I've done that. I really enjoy what I do, I love it on a daily basis. I get to meet a lot of folks. In fact, I've met pretty much the majority of folks in this. Room. If I have not I will find you. <laughs> we'll have a conversation, but I, 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 I love the meeting. I love the debate. I love the camaraderie. I love the neighborhood. You see me visibly. Hopefully, you see me visibly in the community, in all four corners of the city. And it's not because I'm doing it for self worth. I'm doing it because I, I genuinely enjoy it, uh, and uh, I've, been, I've been raised that way. And, and 
it's always about making sure you give back to the community uh, that you love so much. And uh, I don't work in, in, in Lynn. I work in Boston. And I got to tell you, when I'm in Boston, I'm constantly working in Lynn. And um, I wouldn't want to change that. And I, if I wanted to change that, if I really didn't enjoy that, I promise you I would not be sitting here today because I think there would be another qualified person that could stand up. There's a lot of qualified people on this, uh, this Diaz right now that could fill those shoes. Uh, but I'm going to continue to work hard for each and every one of you. Uh, I'm one of your four votes. Uh, Dan Cahill, votecahill.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I don't write anything exciting, though, so I'm sorry. I think it's kind of cruel that it's so late. We've got coffee cups, but no coffee. <laughs> 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 something, something I do rarely and end early. And thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dad. Too much coffee. <laughs> I've been fortunate to be a lifelong resident of Lynn. I have benefited so much from this community, so much from the education system, so much from the, the recreation and the sports I've played, strong family connections. I recently bought my first home with my lovely fiance who's here, so I've benefited in that way as well. Um, I, I want to give back. Lynn's my pride. It's the first thing I think of when I wake up. It's the last thing I think of when I go to bed. It's, it's really, it's a, it's a passion that, that I don't think will ever go away. And my experience as a Ward 5, as a Ward Counselor, has really connected me with you know, constituent services, helping the neighbors, being on the ground level, and I really want to apply that to the Counselor Lodge position, as my colleagues here have done as well. So, I love the job, I'm excited to work. We have a lot of challenges, we've, we've come a long way, and I think if we just keep, keep working at it, we're gonna get over that hump. And Lynn really could be the next big thing in Massachusetts. So thank you, I hope I can have one of your four votes. I think it's uh, really important that um, the makeup of the city council uh, be um, representative of the population, not only in terms of gender and uh, race and national origin and so forth, but I also think it needs to be a uh, uh, all walks of life. We need folks from all different elements of It's important to have a guy like Fuzzy Bot on the fire. It's important to have a guy like Mr. Crichton, who has been very much involved in community service. It's important to have a guy like Mom and Dad on the city council. It's important to have a guy like Dan Kidd. It's, it's also important to have a guy like Paul Brown, Miguel Fumez. Not name, but I am going to say <laughs> we are all, I think, we all bring a lot of different values to the table. And I just want to say that if, when it comes time to vote, think about the different walks of life that represent the eight people on the list. And pick the person that you think helps to fill a gap that exists as a result of a, a lack of something somewhere else. And if we can build an eclectic council that covers all the different walks of life, I think would be a much better uh, council for And with that being said, I'm hoping that in uh, November you'll consider me the one to be able to Why would I be one of the councilors? We live in Lynn, a multicultural city. We can turn around and you'll see somebody from home. Language. You walk downtown and you have food from over God knows how many countries. Whatever you like to eat is here. I'm by Linwood right away again, Cambridge College. And the reason I'm running is to make actually a difference and to also fit into the community, in a multicultural cultural community, and bring something new to the community. Something like we can say instead of saying, don't live Lynn, we could say Viva Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> and change it a bit, you know, change it a bit. Um, I think that I can do a hell of a good job with the experience that I have working in the community, uh, speaking a second language, and um, I think that I'm the person that you might be able to keep on the whole world is coming with them. And I do thank you for coming today. And I really enjoy doing this uh, communication, so I'm say it's not even... Somebody asked me once, I went to get a signature from Creighton, uh, and he said, well, but you're running against him. 
I want you to know that we're not running against each other. We're running to <coughs> you the choice that you think is best to have. I want to thank the big waters again for placing the trust on me uh, two years ago. Tonight, once again, I respectfully ask for the one or two four votes because I want to continue to help to build our city together and I want to finish the job that we are starting. Uh, I enjoy being a council very much. I, I like my uh, work with my colleagues and they uh, have been very nice. And uh, to me, I've been nice to them as well. And, um, and uh, thank you so much for being nice to me as also. <laughs> and, uh, I think I um, have done a, a decent job in council. And I'll uh, get the help from my uh, friends, my team, from everybody, from my colleagues in council. We created the first human rights commission uh, in MRC. And we also uh, established uh, a brand new uh, business association to help with other business uh, communities. And, uh, and I uh, also uh, feel that um, it's important to continue to, uh, to get everyone to uh, engage in uh, decision making. I want to make sure everyone has their voice in the city hall. So uh, please uh, call me anytime to uh, you want. And my, if you want to uh, know more about me, my website is very easy. Thank um, the LCA for hosting this event tonight. Thank you to everybody that attended the event tonight. Um, everyone at home who's watching either via uh, Seth or Link Cam. Um, it is important to remember that everybody here, when they go to vote in November, does have four votes. The counter large race is a lot different than any other race, and not everybody's aware of this, but you do have four votes you can use on any one of the eight of us. I uh, just wanted to give a reminder to everybody on that. But as far as being unique and what sets me apart, I think when you do go to consider your four votes, I think you should pick an ideas guide to fit in with those four votes. I see myself as an ideas guide, and that's what I'm bringing to the table. So if you're looking for someone that's going to think outside the box, bring new ideas to the table, and has a vision for the city, please make me one of your four votes. This fall, when you think counselor at large, please think community at large, and when you think community at large, think Walsh. Thank you.
I would have to say it was not to order the new sound PA system <laughs> that we have ordered just a little earlier because it's not going to be delivered on Friday. So it will be available for the rest of our forums, and I apologize to you guys for not having it tonight. But we need to know that you can speak out for us. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Tom for moderating again tonight. Yeah. I want to thank the eight of eight candidates yeah. who showed up here tonight. And I, these cups are a token of our appreciation. <laughs>